Sylvia here with you. Okay, our team to lead us in our of prayer. Omara Lydia, I see you raised your hand. Please go ahead. Uh, Patricia, it's not Omara. I'm called Doroma. So uh, let's humble ourselves for our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to have this meeting, working of glory. Father, I want to surrender the organizers into your hands and each and everyone who is going to attend this meeting. Father, we pray that you'll be at the center of it. May we understand each and everything that we are yet to learn, O King of Glory. And Father, may also use the person to, to give us knowledge, O Lord. We thank you, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed and believed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lydia, for that prayer. Uh, good afternoon once again. Uh, Thank you for sparing time this afternoon to attend this session. My name is Patricia Absin, manager at Ultimate Multimedia Consult. Uh, today, today uh, we all we organize this skill session every Friday in partnership with Macquarie University, Department of Journalism and Communication, where we offer short courses in digital communication, media journalism and production media literacy and information pedagogy. So for those of you that are already uh, in our WhatsApp groups, you've been seeing us sharing this uh, material. But for those that are not, and you're interested in for the short courses, or you want uh, more details about the uh, uh, short sure courses that we provide, feel free to click on the link we share in our WhatsApp group. The in the chat the link to the okay thank you so like I was saying uh, those that are interested in applying for the short courses the link has been shared in the chat section. And then we also have our WhatsApp group where we continuously share training resources, opportunities, uh, training material in line with journalism and communication. If you're interested in such updates and opportunities, feel free to join the WhatsApp group. The link has also been shared in the chat section. So uh, this afternoon, we are going to look at uh, top artificial intelligence tools to enhance uh, your work productivity. And at this juncture, allow me to invite our facilitator for that day. That is Edward Tumwine, who is a digital communications consultant and trainer uh, who is going to take us through this session. We encourage as much participation and engagement through this session. So feel free to... Uh, share your questions in the chat section or raise your hand and we shall be able to get all your submissions. Edward Tumwine, you are welcome. Edward, can you hear me? Yeah, you can't hear me. Hello. No, if you've been speaking, we haven't been hearing you. Thank you. 
Hello. Good afternoon. Can you hear me well? I just need to confirm I'm getting uh, feedback. Yes, we can. All right. Uh, thank you. Sorry about um, I'm seeing in the comments that my voice was low. Yes, good afternoon once again. It's a pleasure to facilitate this session uh, this afternoon on the top uh, artificial intelligence tools that enhance your work productivity. So uh, I know this is a term that uh, is common uh, these days, and uh, I would like, as we begin this session, uh, to to understand how you are, how you get this term artificial intelligence. Uh, feel free to share in the chat or even raise your hand and share with us what uh, comes to your mind when you hear the term artificial intelligence. Anyone who would like to share with us artificial intelligence? Please feel free to share. We want this to be as interactive as possible so that you can all learn. Hey, um, Miriam says, I think of machines. Yes. Any other? Um, I think of intelligence uh, displayed by machines versus uh, intelligence by humans. Okay, thank you for sharing. Great. Um, Mandel says uh, it's the process of passing information through a new technology. Great. Elizabeth says robots. And no computers have the ability to act like humans. Great, we can keep the submissions coming. Yes, so in summary, to sum up what um, our colleagues have said, um, we can say that uh, artificial intelligence is the refers to the de development of computer systems that can perform tasks that typically require human intelligence. Okay, so these systems are, are basically designed to analyze uh, information, learn from different patterns using different algorithms, and make decisions or take actions. And to help us appreciate uh, this concept of artificial intelligence better, I would like us to watch this video, uh, which is going to be played so that it can bring uh, provide more context to what artificial intelligence is. And after it, uh, feel free to share uh, if this concept has been uh, broken down better. It's a weekend, and John decided to watch the latest movie recommended by Netflix at his friend's place. Before heading out, he asked Siri about the weather and realized it would rain. So he decided to take his Tesla for the long journey and switch to autopilot on the highway. After coming home from the eventful day, he started wondering how technology has made his life easy. He did some research on the internet and found out that Netflix, Siri, and Tesla are all using AI. So what is AI? AI, or artificial intelligence, is nothing but making computers-based machines think and act like humans. Artificial intelligence is not a new term. John McCarthy, a computer scientist, coined the term artificial intelligence back in 1956. But it took time to evolve as it demanded heavy computing power. Artificial intelligence is not confined to just movie recommendations and virtual assistants. Broadly classifying, there are three types of AI. Artificial narrow intelligence, also called weak AI, is the stage where machines can perform a specific task. Netflix, Siri, chatbots, facial recommendation systems are all examples of artificial narrow intelligence. Next up, we have artificial general intelligence, referred to as an intelligent agent's capacity to comprehend or pick up any intellectual skill that a human can. We are halfway into successfully implementing this phase. IBM's Watson Supercomputer and GPT-3 fall under this category. And lastly, artificial superintelligence. It is the stage where machines surpass human intelligence. You might have seen this in movies and imagined how the world would be if machines occupied it. 
Fascinated by this, John did more research and found out that machine learning, deep learning, and natural language processing are all connected with artificial intelligence. Machine learning, a subset of AI, is the process of automating and enhancing how computers learn from their experiences without human help. Machine learning can be used in email spam detection, medical diagnosis, etc. Deep learning can be considered a subset of machine learning. It is a field that is based on learning and improving on its own by examining computer algorithms. While machine learning uses simpler concepts, deep learning works with artificial neural networks, which are designed to imitate the human brain. This technology can be applied in face recognition, speech recognition, and many more applications. Natural language processing, popularly known as NLP, can be defined as the ability of machines to learn human language and translate it. Chatbots fall under this category. Artificial intelligence is advancing in every crucial field like healthcare, education, robotics, banking, e-commerce, and the list goes on. Like in healthcare, AI is used to identify diseases, helping healthcare service providers and their patients make better treatment and lifestyle decisions. Coming to the education sector, AI is helping teachers automate grading, organizing, and facilitating parent-guardian conversations. In robotics, AI-powered robots employ real-time updates to detect obstructions in their path and instantaneously design their routes. Artificial intelligence provides advanced data analytics that is transforming banking by reducing fraud and enhancing compliance. With this growing demand for AI, more and more industries are looking for AI engineers who can help them develop intelligent systems and offer them lucrative salaries going north of $120,000. The future of AI looks promising with the AI market expected to reach $190 billion by 2025. Uh, from that video, I hope now we have been able to gain some more understanding about artificial intelligence. Anyone who would like to care to share what uh, the key reflections from this video are? Yes. Any takeaways from this video? Yes, Lydia. Lydia. Thank you. Uh, what I've taken, okay, my key takeaway is um, AI is not here to replace us as humans at what we do, but it's here to simplify work for us. Because at first I, I heard people saying, um, now AI is going to replace, let me say writers, because you can put what you want and chat, GTP will just help you transcribe everything. But then according to this video, it's here to make our work easy. It has simplified work, but yeah, that's what I can say for now. Because when you see um, education sector, health sector, okay, like all these other sectors are benefiting from AI and things are more simplified now than it used to be then before AI. Okay, thank you for sharing. Anyone else would like to share? Uh, someone is saying she's muted, Shira. And are you, are you not unable to unmute? You're not able, sorry, to unmute. Yes, Elizabeth. Thank you, Edward. Um, I think um, it's just a matter of time and we see the world evolving to what may not be known right now. Because from, from the video, we are told that there are the general intelligence.
that's where it's going to surpass. The machines are going to surpass human intelligence. For me, is where the question is. Then what happens? I didn't hear some parts of uh, your question. I don't know if it was my network or... We could not even hear from this side. Future super intelligence. For, for the narrow intelligence, the general intelligence, okay, I can understand that. Uh, the machines are interacting with humans and can take um, command from humans and probably give an output based on the command. Mm -hmm. okay. Super intelligence, where when we get to a point where super and so much um, such as human intelligence, then depends. Thanks. Thank you, Elizabeth. I don't know, I'm not so certain if you had a question because your network was a bit shaky. If so, please share it in the chat and uh, we'll be able to address it because I didn't, didn't hear parts of the question. Yes, uh, Shira. Mm -hmm. Guys, the network is not really good. Yes, but we can hear you. Yeah, I could not actually hear the question about. Uh... <laughs> okay. I was asking I for your key take away from the video. Sorry. I was asking for the, for your key take away from the video that you just watched. In regards oh, to. Oh sure. Okay, I think we can proceed. Yes, uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, I think all of what you have uh, shared is in context. And uh, I'm glad to know that we are now getting more familiar with the concept. And uh, as we go forward in the session, we shall see its applicability and how relevant it is today uh, in our workspace. Is my volume low? I'm seeing someone in the chat say that my volume is low. Is it the same for everyone? Sorry, what of now? I'm using headphones. Uh, I don't know if it's the headphones. Is it better now? Okay, great. Uh, let me continue. So uh, this image here uh, that is being shared, uh, we want to see how AI is working in our daily lives. And as you can see, uh, even from the video, AI in outside and uh, even from our smartphone. I want to believe uh, we have seen the use of AI in our smartphone. Uh, those of us who have iPhone, we know that functionality of Siri, where you can command it to the phone and All right, I, what of now? Okay, I have removed the headsets. I have been told that it's now better. I think we can proceed like this. Okay, so I was still uh, talking about uh, the use of AI and now smartphones, those of us who have iPhones uh, and use Siri, you know how you can command Siri and it can do a, perform a certain functionality based on the command that you have given it. Uh, even with social media, uh, the different algorithms that uh, social media sets. Um, I want to believe when you are, let's say, on uh, Instagram or YouTube and uh, you, you, you search for content, and then the more frequent you go back to that platform, it will be uh, generating for you content based on your previous searches. So all that is uh, machines being programmed to uh, what you content that is based on your search over a given period of time. Uh, the same as with e-commerce, these different e-commerce platforms uh, that we usually uh, interface with, let's say like Jumia, where they suggest for you items based on what you regularly search. So artificial intelligence is being used across different sectors. Even, so in the video, in health, 
and even autom autonomous videos, uh, sorry, vehicles. Today, there are uh, vehicles that can, that can drive themselves. Sorry, my screen. Yes, today uh, there are vehicles that can drive themselves and all these are programmed and based on different prompts to help you uh, reach your destination. Any other uh, sector or area where that anyone would like to share where uh, artificial intelligence is being, uh, would like to share your experience probably. Can continue. Uh, sure. Yes. Sure. Sure. I, I don't know. I'm saying. Yes. This is sure. What about in schools? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Yes. Yes. Um, some, in schools, can how? Us. Someone can help us. Maybe I'm just bringing it, but I don't know if mm. I talk. Uh, Artificial intelligence can be working out through schools. I don't know. How is it? Does anyone have uh, any experience in school where artificial intelligence has been used? What I know is today, uh, some of these programs can be uh, can be programmed to, let's say, auto-generate like reports, uh, examinations. <laughs> and some of you in the programs that we shall be looking later, if you're going to further usage and development of them, you're able to integrate them into education systems and they're able to generate reports, questions uh, that you can that can be used in school. So yes, AI can also be applied in schools as well. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So uh, specifically, even in, in journalism and communication, we're seeing that AI is, is also being utilized and applied there. And these are the different uh, areas in which it is in terms of data processing, machine translation, uh, graphics production, uh, where today you're able to just command a tool and uh, it's able to design for you with graphic comments management. Today, there are very many uh, AI powered bots that are able to read comments, uh, even filter uh, abusive comments. So AI is being used today to enhance the quality of journalism and even improve uh, journalistic work. Okay, there is even additional information on, on uh, the usage of AI in education, which is in the chat. So Shira and anyone else can feel free to, to read or there. So today are uh, many tools are being, uh, today even many more tools and, and programs are being engineered and to work better uh, and to perform and to increase your work output. Uh, just like, for example, many times you probably, uh, people who want to report to our meetings and uh, want to record everything that is going on. Uh, most of the times people have been typing out as verbatim as people are speaking, but today with even tools like Microsoft Word, you are able to, to command it to, to be able to, 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 to listen to the, to, to the voice that is being uh, mentioned or shared, and then it can turn it into text. And I want us to see how this can be done practically. So let me stop sharing my screen here. Then we see how that can be done. So if you have your Microsoft Word open on, on your computer, you can try this out as well. You can turn your voice into text so that it can be able to record uh, everything being mentioned and turn it into text which you can which you can save. So to be able to, 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 to automatically uh, capture audio uh, from your Microsoft Word, uh, you press your Windows button and the letter H. Okay, you press Windows and H, and it should be able to, to bring you a pop-up. Where you'll be, where where it will bring a microphone for you to for it, for you to begin listening to your voice. Okay. So right here, just a second.
Okay, so once you see the microphone, then you click on it and then it will begin listening to what you are saying. So if in your computer, you can try it as well. Okay, so it will begin here. So good afternoon. Uh, today we are having a lesson on artificial intelligence and uh, it is being facilitated by Mr. Tumuine Edward and we are glad to have you today. So if you've tried it on, uh, on your Microsoft Word, it should be able to capture uh, whatever you're mentioning and turning it into text. Of course, you have to be as articulate as possible so that it can be able to capture your words well. Uh, but this is one simple way that you can use Microsoft Word uh, to capture your audio and turn it into text quickly. Okay, then when you want to stop, uh, you just click on the microphone and it will automatically stop. Hope that's clear. Okay, let us proceed now. Yes, Maria. Yeah, um, yes, uh, thank you, Edward, for this. I was just wondering, because most times when we attend Zoom meetings, of course, they're recorded. And um, of course, you know, sometimes there's text also that comes with it, but normally it's not very clear. So how then is it possible for me to get this Zoom recording as it's playing maybe, and then uh, it, uh, then Microsoft Word can help me transcribe? Is it possible? Yes, uh, we, there are actually, uh, to, there's a tool we're going to look at that is able to, to transcribe uh, audio and turn it into text. We shall be looking at it later in, in the okay, session. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. Okay, we can proceed. So furthermore, now we want to delve uh, practically and see some of uh, the different AI tools that are of importance and can help improve our work. So first, we are going to look at this tool called Copy AI. Uh, it can help us to generate social media content, blog content uh, quickly, and uh, this, we're going to do this practically. I am going to share the link to this tool in the chat so that we can all uh, do it at the same time. So it's called uh, Copy AI. Let me share the link in the chat. Yes, I would also advise um, most of these tools will require you to, to sign up let's say, with your email or Google account. So uh, it would be advisable if you have your Gmail open uh, or if you're signing into your Google account in your browser so that you can easily proceed to the interface of the tool as you work with it. So this is Copy AI and uh, we want to begin. Uh, begin here with Get Started. Okay, then uh, you continue with Google. I'm going to continue with Google. And then you select a uh, Google account, depending on what is signed in your browser. Let's give it a few seconds to load, then we can proceed. Okay, then you answer some of these questions. Let's see if you can skip the question if you really don't want to, there's an option to skip question below here. So this, mm -hmm. 
use it alone for now. Click next. Skip question depending. Here you can pick where you saw it, where you heard about this tool from. Justin, you're saying it says access blocked. I don't know what the issue could be. Is anyone having the same problem? I don't know what could be wrong. Maybe my network's poor, I don't know. Mm, probably, but it should be working well. Oh, someone uh, else is okay. saying access blocked. Wow. I honestly don't know what the issue could be, but it should be running well. So you can uh, you can write and, and tell uh, this tool to generate for you a blog post on a, on a particular topic of, of your choice, okay? So for example, now I'm going to tell it to generate a blog post on how to optimize uh, your content for the web. Okay, and to do that, I'll come here in this space, I tell, Generate a blog post on how to optimize your content for the web. And then uh, it will start generating for you information that you uh, post. So as you can see, um, it, really provides good context. And this actually, this is uh, what is required um, if you actually want to write a good article on how to optimize your content, okay? So you can, you can copy this and take it to your web editor where you can include this as a blog post and even do further research uh, and even add more missing areas on, what, on, on, on how you can optimize your content for the web. So uh, you can utilize this as much as possible in case you want to get uh, different points on how to begin a blog post on a particular topic. You can always use uh, Copy AI and to, to give you that. Let us uh, now ask it to create a social media post probably, and then we see what it will bring for us. Social media post. in Uganda. Okay, I think, uh, I don't know if this is the internet, but um, it should be able to generate for you a good post, uh, social media post that you can utilize on either of your social media platforms in regards to that. Okay, feel free to try this at your own time as we are going to explore as many tools as possible. But it could be it can be able, it can be used to generate blog posts, social media posts, and many other. If you look here under tools, um, you'll see that it has uh, social media tools, blog tools, and many other functionalities. Charlotte, does it have limits on the period you can get information like uh, which year? Yes, I think uh, you can. You can. As you ask the question, as you're commanding it, as you're asking it, you can specify uh, on the year, uh, just to be certain with your question. And this works, uh, this cuts across to these different AI tools. You have to be as specific as possible so that you can generate the kind of exact information that you want from it. Okay. So that is with uh, Copy AI. 
And then uh, let us proceed to Quillbot. Uh, Quillbot is also a very uh, good tool that can help you uh, edit out your content, uh, different mistakes, check for grammar spellings. And we are going to look at it practically as well. Let me share the link to this in the chat. Okay, so this is how, this is the interface of Quillbot. I, it has other similar programs that work like this, uh, like uh, Scribens, Grammarly, that help to improve the grammar in your text and, and make it devoid of errors. So you can um, paste text here or upload a document uh, that you have on your computer and it will be able to, to work on it. So the, and under Quillbot, we have here a paraphraser, grammar checker, plagiarism checker, and in each section, to see how this can work. So let me get some text here, if you can use. Okay, so, um, so this is the, the content I've pasted, and now uh, we are under paraphraser, and we wanted to now paraphrase this information. So once I click on paraphrase, yes, you will see that um, it has paraphrased this. And uh, once you click on the areas that have been highlighted, it will give you suggestions of how this can be paraphrased better. As you can see here, these are the different suggestions. We have here cooperation. Okay. So if you want to really uh, improve your, your work, uh, let's say in Word, if, if it's a report or anything, you can use this tool to, use, to do that. What is the difference between Copy AI and Chat GPT? Well, uh, they're both AI, uh, AI tools. Uh, um, the difference, um, does anyone know the difference between Copy AI and Chat GPT? I think uh, Copy AI is more tailored to uh, creation of like blog posts, though even Chat GPT can be uh, engineered and prompted to be to do the same. I think uh, Chat GPT is actually even wider than that. And actually, next week we shall have a full detailed uh, session on how you can uh, maximize the best out of Chat GPT. Though we shall also be looking at it today. Okay, so we have looked at the, the paraphraser under Quillbot, then we can go to Grammar Checker. So if you want to check the grammar in your text, uh, still you can test that text. And this tool will be able to do the same. Okay, so uh, every, every word that is probably a grammar grammatical error and uh, as you can see, it points it out here on the right. Okay, so you're able, it's able to show you uh, these different areas and how they can be corrected. Okay, and below here we have fix errors, so you can uh, click on it and it will automatically fix the errors that are within your text. Okay, and now you are good to go. So plagiarism checker, this is a premium uh, function. You will need to upgrade to be able to access this. And then we have here co-writer. Co-writer also, uh, you're able to speak into, into this and then it, it, it will be able to, to generate for you text. You can try this out quickly. Okay, so um, you can click here and uh, tell it to listen and then you begin speaking. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Oh, 
Okay. Click here. So you can also use this to turn uh, your text into audio, depending. Okay, so let's go back here. Okay, so there are different other functionalities here. Summarizer, in case you want to summarize your text. Many times you have a text with a very big statements or even long paragraphs and you want to summarize. So if you, did your, if you pasted your, your text here, you can be able to summarize it well. Okay, and then you click here to summarize. Okay, so out of those very many words, um, it has been summarized into this. So you can see the number of words was 203, and now we have 78 words. And you can always really improve it, or if you feel like it has summarized it too, and it's too short, you can always improve it, okay? Yes, so uh, in summary, that is uh, the use of Quillbot. And like I said, um, we are scratching the surface of these tools. Uh, please feel free to go and indulge and engage with them to find out more amazing functionalities that they have. Audio, I went to CoreWriter. CoreWriter under Quillbot, it's right here. I'm answering you, Charlotte, the question in the chat. Yes, Ed, Ed, Edward, I don't have co-writer on, oh yes, I've seen it, thank you. Okay, uh, let's proceed. So next we have uh, a Pictory. This is a, a tool, still an AI tool that can easily convert your text or even a blog article into a video. As we, um, to believe we all know that uh, con Video content is very much on demand. It's very engaging. So the more content that we have there that we are able to turn into video, uh, the better it is for our content consumers and even you as a content creator. So Pictory is uh, pictory.ai. I'll also share this in the chat. Yes, so this is the interface and then we'll go to free trial. Sorry. Uh, I don't know what issue could be here. Uh, someone is asking, what did I use to transcribe in Word? Uh, I pressed, uh, you press Windows, window, the Windows button and H and uh, to be able to, to begin capturing your voice or audio. I am not certain what's wrong with uh, Pictory, but uh, we can look at an alternative tool called Lumen. Lumen 5 also serves the same purpose. Let me share this in the chat. So um, can use Lumen to be able to uh, convert uh, your blog article or even text into video. So once again, I'll click to sign up. Put in my details. Right 
Sorry, let me change this email to create accounts. So here you can select either this or you can skip. And then here to ask you to choose a template, pending. So you can pick any template here of the kind of the video that you want to create. Pick this. And right here below, add also, you can select the orientation of the video, whether you want it landscape or mobile more portrait, depending on where you're going to, it's going to be published, then you can click on use this template. So for now, we are going to uh, use this function of transforming your text into video. Okay, so if you have an article, um, the link, if you have a link to an article, you can paste it here and it will be to, to turn it into a video. So I'm going to get a link here. And then paste it here. And then you click, uh, after pasting your link, you tell it to import so that it can begin putting your article to turn it into a video. Okay. So this is the content within my article, and then you can continue here with AI. Okay, so it automatically breaks uh, the, the content within the article into different scenes for the video, as you can see here. And then here you command it to convert it to video. Okay, so these are the different uh, scenes in the video, as you can see. It auto generates images based on the text uh, that were in the article. Okay. And you can edit uh, each of the text, uh, the video, even the image. Okay. You want to edit the text, all you need to do is highlight there. Then you can add any letter in scene. Uh, it also has different images in case the image uh, within a particular scene is not to your liking or preference. You can always click on, let's say, this image and then it will come here instead. And have it replaced like that. If you want to upload your own image and use it here. Yes, Michael? A simple one. Yes. Before we leave that, uh, what about the time frame? Can I give it the time frame? For example, I need a video maybe for five minutes. Can I give it a time frame? Or it has a limit that I can't record a video of a certain time? Now you can you can increase the, the time frame, actually, even of each scene here. You see uh, the time frame of this scene here. If you want this to be for eight seconds, you can increase it even this one, okay? So until uh, it reaches your desired uh, minutes that you'd want to need. 
Thank you. You're welcome. So I was saying, if you want to use your own images, uh, for example, in this video, you can come and upload, click on upload media. Mm -hmm. and then you pick an image of your choice. Give it a few seconds to load. Then you click here on upload. So after it uploads here, then you can uh, select it to come into this particular scene within the video and to change right there. You also have a uh, music here. It has some uh, audio tracks, but as you can see, uh, M function. For example, if you want to use this in the video, or you can also upload your own, okay? If you have your own, uh, probably your voiceover or any kind of background music that you'd want to add in this video, you can upload it from here. It's the same process as we did with the image. Okay, so uh, to delete any scene from here or to duplicate, you can delete from here or duplicate a scene. And after it, all is said and done and you are satisfied with uh, this preview, then you go on to publish this. Uh, Ramatu, you're saying which link specific? The link to the tool? So depending on your internet speed, um, it take a while and even the length of the video, but after publishing, you should be able to have your video and be able to download it as well. Yes, Michael. Yeah, so a simple one. After publishing and downloading, mm -hmm. uh, won't I get watermarks in my video? Yes, uh, for now you will get a watermark because you're using it at a uh, free trial. If you want to have your video devoid of a watermark, you'll have to upgrade. Okay, thank you, Steve. Okay, so I won't wait for this for so long since we have other tools to look at and internet speed is not so fast but after reaching this level it will generate the video and you're able to have your content in video form okay it's actually here so after it generates you can even play it and then you download it here So that is our video. Let us proceed to look at the next tool. So we have this other tool called uh, DID Studio that is able to transform your image and, and, and uh, you're able to feed it text and it into, uh, into motion, okay? So once again, I'm going to share the, the link to this in the chat. So as soon as um, you go to it, uh, you click here on start free trial. Okay. And then uh, you come here to create video. Okay. So I'll come here to click on create video. 
And here you upload your image. So if you have your image on your computer or your mobile phone, you add it from here. And then you'll have to sign up to the tool to be able to do that. So I'm going to continue with Google. Hey, once again, I'll repeat the process, come to create video, then go to add an image from my computer. Someone is asking the, the recording shall be shared as well. Okay. If uh, didn't load it well, let me add the image again. So if your image loads there, I uh, should be able to begin to give it text. I don't know why this is taking long. Yes, okay. So the image loads there and then you put the text that you want that image to, to say. For example, good afternoon. Okay, then here you can determine um, the language in which it will be spoken. We have English, US, the, the closest to us as uh, East Africans here, I can say it's English, Kenya. Unfortunately, there's no Uganda, there's English, Tanzania, Nigeria. I saw we have someone from Nigeria, you can select uh, English, Nigeria, but I'm going to select English, Kenya here. Then also the type of voice whether you want it as a female or as a male. So depending on your gender, I'll select here male, and then I'll tell it to generate video. So you give this a few seconds, and then you click here to generate. So this can be used if you're not able to be somewhere and you want to, let's say, give uh, opening remarks or something, you can generate this with an image, give feed it your words and to be able to speak, you can share the video. Anyone who has successfully created one? It's taking quite long. I don't know if it's the internet speed. Someone is asking, how do you make it talk in our local languages? 
well, you work with the languages that it provides within there. So for now, uh, you can't make it speak Luganda, something unless you have your, your text already in Luganda or whatever local language you speak. But as for the, the, the pre, the languages which are there for now, uh, it's only those, those different ones that we saw, English, Spanish, and a few others. This is taking quite long. I think we can proceed. Oh, it's, it's here. Yes, it has generated it, so we can play it here. Yes, so you can make that video quickly and then you download it and uh, you're able to share it different people. I hope you were able to hear. Did you hear what uh, the video? Hope the sound was able to come out. Were you able to hear output from the video? Oh. No, personal, I haven't. No, we didn't hear. No, you I, I, I heard it because it was sluggish, but I had. Let me share again. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining the session today. We are covering artificial intelligence. Let's enjoy. Okay, I hope that was audible. Yeah, it was audible and typical Kenyan accent indeed. Thank you. Yes. Yes, so you can play around with different accents and uh, be able to come up with something creative and download is right here. Okay, another tool. Yes, uh, then we have here chat GPT. I've had some people call it Chapati GPT. <laughs> But I'm sure this is one of the most common one, chat GPT or chat, whatever I like to call it. And um, I want to believe at least uh, most of us have started interfacing with this. Uh, yes, I'll share the link to chat GPT in the chat as well. Yeah, so this is an AI tool that can help you generate uh, responses based on what you feed it. And uh, like I said earlier, next week we shall have uh, facilitate uh, Mr. Kapoor Bernard who will go in depth on how you can maximize and get the best out of chat GPT. So if you're a first time user and you're signing up for the first time, you come and click here and try chat GPT. Then you come here to sign up. Your email address. Oh, actually, I will opt for continuing with Google since I'm already signed in here. It also require you to put in your phone number so that it can verify you. So ensure that you have your phone nearby you to be able to authenticate this. Oh, I think I've used this on too many.
then you receive a code which you put in. Great, so this is the interface of ChatGPT, and now we can begin to ask it uh, information and uh, so that we can get uh, prompt feedback. So I would like to suggest um, you know, to share with us what we can ask ChatGPT. You can share in the chat or raise your hand and then we see what kind of response it will generate here. What, what question can we... Can we give here in chat GPT? Can I give one? Yes, please. I would like to ask chat GPT, what's happening in Kasese? What is happening in Kasese? Yes. Um, that may be, you know, that, that, yeah, I think you have to be quite okay. specific. Mm. All right. What causes floods? What causes floods? Yeah. Okay. Yes, so as you can see, um, so it will generate for you different factors to what cause causes floods and you can copy these okay you can copy this response put it in word or share it anywhere you can also share a, a link to to that uh, response that you've got you have a link here and then you share it either in whatsapp or to different platforms of your preference okay so uh chat like i said we shall have a more detailed insight into chat gpt next friday what is the difference between chat gpt and google search question from jackson anyone would like to answer him Uh, they are a bit also quite both similar since they also search for content from uh, different, they crawl the web for from different sources for information. Charlotte is asking, is saying of current information like that question on Kasese. We can ask and see just to confirm. Sorry, I had uh, gone off. Can you hear me well now again? Okay. So someone was asking about if it has information on the cause of floods, Kasese in Uganda, let's test and see.
Hey. So um, you can ask it as many questions, but uh, as a general tip, you have to be as specific as much as possible on what you want. If you want uh, something from a particular uh, information regarding this, you ask it so that it can be able to generate um, that information as you have asked it. Okay, so that for now, continue to another one. So another similar a tool like ChatGPT we have here is uh, by chat. And uh, what is uh, amazing about this one, it doesn't even require you to sign up anywhere. So you're able to go to it straight away and begin to ask it any information. Okay, so type here, that was the previous question that we had. Can ask it here. Okay, so they are similar in, in nature, and uh, you can cross compare uh, depending on which uh, platform gives you the most uh, correct answers. Okay, let's proceed. And then we have another tool here called uh, Consensus. It helps to give you uh, information based on that, that uh, on different topics, based with even research, citations, and even where it is coming from. So this is called Consensus. I'll share the, the link in the chat. Okay, so here, and then you ask, um, what does the research say about? So here you put in any topic. So we can put in this very topic. Intelligence. And you press enter. Okay, so as you can see here, it, give you, it gives you different, um, information on what has been cited and even provided that this has been highly cited. So for example, this. Okay, and you can see the author plus more, more other authors. And uh, if you come back here to have the full text here, if you want the full text to this, you can go there. And then you get more information. If you come back here to the home page, uh, you can even determine um, the years in which you want that information from. So if you want from only 2023, and select there or 2022. Okay. Uh, Elizabeth, please uh, mute your microphone. We're getting feedback from you. Okay, let's look at the next tool. So the next tool we have is called Perplexity. It's also similar to Consensus. Uh, it also uh, gives the information where it has been cited from the author, and it's also another tool that you can use. So,
Motion had gone off. Bush, was your hand up? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Um, I wanted to just raise a question. Yeah. That uh, does artificial intelligence is it only in position to answer more scientific questions, or how good is AI? In, in giving us answers to sociological questions, historical aspects that might not seem very scientific, like about coral reefs or, or the ocean or floods. And yeah, yes, it's able to give you, thank you, it's able to give you, to provide you information on any, on any sector, whether sociological, scientific, it can even generate for you code it depends on what you what how you ask it. So the, actually, the skill is 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 how how to get the best out of it. The the, the better you are at uh, asking it exactly uh, with different keywords and prompts, uh, you're able to get more information out of it. And um, actually, next Friday you should be able to join. Shall have a more detailed session on Chat GPT of how you're able to get really the best out of it. Okay, Bush. All right, uh, let us proceed. Okay, so I've looked at perplexity. So now we want to look at a tool, how you can convert your image to text. Sometimes you have an image uh, which has text within and you want to extract that text uh, from that image. So we have a tool here that is able to do that. It's called uh, image text. I'll share the link in the chat. So what you need to do is um, upload the, your image right here. So you have to make sure you have that image which has some text with it. For example, this. So after you put it there, then you click here to submit. Okay, once again, you can, the experience I've had with this, sometimes it can refuse one or two times, but it should be able to generate, to extract the text from it. Can we load this? And also dependent on your internet speed as well. So you make sure you have a good fast internet connection. Browse for an image. You can pick another one if that one is giving us trouble. For example, this is an image here, some text. And I'll click here and submit. Let's do this one more time. I don't know what the issue could be. Click submit. Someone is asking in the chat, are there free plagiarism checkers? 
You want to answer? Okay, I don't know what the issue is with this, but uh, you can try this. I've used it several times and uh, it's able to generate a text from your image. Yes, uh, Godwin. Um, thank you for, for, for that amazing work. I think uh, I put my question in the chat and it was missed. Uh, I'm interested in knowing uh, the fact that we are using these, um, these tools. Um, and the fact that they generate uh, mm. information automatically. Uh, how do we navigate the issues of, of plagiarism? Yes. Is it possible that if I prompt, for instance, chat GPT using almost the same um, question mm. queries, it can generate almost similar answers to different people. So that when, when this is used, for instance, in the, in the text, then it may raise issues of plagiarism. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we deal with that? Or is, is it possible in the first place? Thank you. All right, uh, anyone who would like to answer before I take that, up, take that on? So, you, you, um, further addition, you're also able to ask uh, chat GPT to give you, uh, let's say, plagiarism free content, which will not get you into any trouble. Okay. So that's why I was saying the more particular you are with what you ask it, uh, the better kind of response that you'll get. So you need to be as intentional with the kind of information that you want from it. So you ask it for, let's say, plagiarism free content, and then uh, it should be able to generate that. So uh, for at last, this tool has been able to generate text for that image. This is the information that is here. Uh, Bush, you said you want, you'd like to share something? Yeah, yes. Um, I think, thank you for that question. That question is very elaborate. And indeed, I don't think there's one single uh, correct answer. However, I think, and I'm no expert by there on AI, uh, so this, uh, this is my view uh, from the little that I've learned over time interacting with different from different platforms as well. As in this day and era, we have a lot of needs for information and indeed plagiarism is a concern. However, when you, when you prompt AI to generate uh, information about a certain topic, a particular topic you're interested in, as a person, you need to be in position to digest that information and have your own touch onto it. I do not think it's okay for you to prompt AI in this era, uh, any of us, and then whatever it gives me about floods, I just carry it as it is and paste it into my document, boom. I don't think that's how we, we're supposed to use it. However, AI can, it can make you more efficient instead of struggling to look for information about particular uh, flooding or coral reefs or, or a social aspect like, like whatever is happening in society instead of digging into books and pages and pages, it, it's able to open your eyes to this information and then you can have your own touch, your own voice onto it. So I think it's also important as researchers, academics or practitioners in whichever field we're in to have our own touch. Do not, we, we're not supposed to carry that information and put it in a document because it will give the same to someone else post probably besides being very particular on whatever we are searching for. I think that helps a lot to ensure that uh, your voice will be different, definitely from mine, even when you're speaking about the same topic. Thank you for now, hope it makes sense. Thank you, Bush. Uh, Father, even in the chat, um, more information on this has been shared. So let us proceed to the next tool. Yes, we want to look at this magic eraser tool if you want to remove an unwanted object in your image. Um, I'll share the link to the chat here. So 
So you come and upload the image that where you want to erase something. For example, this, upload it. Why this is taking long. Yes, so this is the image. And um, so you have the brush here and this brush, you're able to clear out the area that you want to erase. So you rub it across uh, whatever part that you don't want in the image, for example, here, to remove these microphones. And then below you click here on erase. And they will be gone like that. You can decrease the size of the brush from here or increase it from there. Okay, then after you click here to you just remove this. Above, you click here to download. So, um, because primarily, uh, if you want it without a watermark, you will have to go premium, but uh, below here, you can download it with a uh, Magic Studio logo, which is not so big, but at least you'll have uh, removed that part and uh, you're able to download it. Okay. So that's how you can use that tool to erase parts from your image. Next. What does the Magic Studio do? Yes, the, it, it uh, erases, that tool that I've done, erases a part, unwanted part from your image. If there's an, is a part in an image that you don't want, you can use it to erase that, that, that particular set segment. So this next tool called Pickwish uh, is able, well, it's able to enhance the quality of your image. If you've taken an image and it's in not, let's say the best resolution and it's not so clear, you can upload it on this tool uh, to increase its uh, quality. So we have the, the link in the chat here. So once it loads, uh, you come here to upload your image. It, and then you begin processing to increase its uh, quality. So many times you may take a picture, it's not so clear, it's blurry, and you want to use it maybe professionally or share it. So this tool will be able to enhance the quality of that image. And if you go to the left, so it shows you even uh, the before and after, okay? So this is the before and this is the after. And uh, once you're satisfied with that, and then you click here on download image. So of course, to be able to download this, you'll have to first sign up and then it will be able to download. Sorry, sign up. And after you click here to download. And you will have your enhanced image uh, download. Right there. Okay, let's proceed. Then we want to see how you can remove the background of an image. 
Okay, so this is the tool. It's called uh, Remove BJ. BG, sorry. Remove BG. Share. Apologies, um, I've got some internet difficulty here, but I'm back. I don't know if there's any artificial intelligence to make internet run without interruption. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should ask chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> G 
True, 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 true. Otherwise, things are hot. Okay, so uh, where had we stopped? Yes, we were here on uh, the tool that can help to remove the background of an image. Uh, reload this. Yes, so you upload your image. This. And then it will automatically detect and remove the background. Okay. And then you download your image right here. Okay, very simple tool and uh, free, no need for sign up. Next, um, we have this tool that can be able to uh, convert your text into an image, okay? So with this tool, uh, you simply give it a command and then uh, it will generate an image based on what you have, uh, what you have told it. So it's called GenCraft. I will share it in the chat. Okay, so right here, you, we are going to come here to generate now. Google. Um, and here you can cancel. So here is where you put the information. What type of image do you want? Okay. So here we can put a black man. Playing on. Ground covered with brown leaves. Okay, and uh, you, you can select the style of the image that you want. You want it as a cartoon, animation, painting. Okay, so we can select here, let's say, an oil painting, and then you tell it to generate. Okay, so it, uh, this is what it has brought. So based on what you have put in, right, you'll be able to generate that image. And as you can see, it's a picture of a black man on the ground with brown uh, leaves, covered with brown leaves. And then you can download it and use it wherever you want to. So let's proceed. Then this tool, uh, you can create an avatar from uh, your image. We've seen these avatars on different websites. Turn your image, let's say, into a cartoon form weekly. Uh, so it's called media.io avatar. So again, link is in the chat. So you come here and upload your image. Okay, and then you select uh, how you want it. The Disney, there are different types here, aesthetic. You want it as a sketch. As you can see, if you click on it as a sketch. Tell it to apply. It will turn it into a sketch. So you can play around with these different uh, tonalities here, cool. 
you want to be like an American comic, click there, and then it will apply that same functionality. Okay, so when you're done, then you click here to download. Of course, you are uh, like the others, you have to sign up for an account uh, with Google, and then you'll be able to download it on the computer. So that's how you can quickly turn your image into an avatar or any cartoon form. Let's quickly go to the next. Yes, so we have this tool here that uh, you're able to generate a present a presentation slides form. All you need is to give it a topic and then it will generate for you presentation slides. So this is called uh, Dectopass. Okay. So for example, here, um, tell it to presentation. Let me tell you to generate my presentation. Once again, sign up with Google. Okay, so it asks you more, uh, what, what's your presentation about? Is it benefiting or benefits? Um, who is your audience? Are they social media marketers, business owners? So depending on the suggestions here, uh, you pick the most appropriate. So I'm going to pick here, probably I'm going to present to social media marketers who need this information and I'll click on next. Then what is the aim of the presentation? Is it to educate, to provide a step-by-step -step guidance or to inspire? So I'm going to click here to provide a step-by-step -step guidance. Then how long is this presentation? So basing on that, you can click here in 25 minutes, then you click next. And then you also select a template of uh, the slides that you want it to be generated in. Click that and click generate presentation. So this can give you a starting point in case you're creating presentations on any topic. Okay, so as you can see, uh, these are our slides and these are the uh, different slides there. to create Twitter ads. And you can edit each um, of the elements in here. You can edit the title, edit the list, add in an image. Okay, so, and you see how I was specific in 2023, because I had to, I wanted it to be latest, how it can be done this current time, okay? So it will gener generate for you slides based on that. Okay. And uh, you can add additional slides or remove the ones that you feel are not relevant. Okay, but at least you have a starting point for your presentation. So um, you to be able to download this as a PDF or, or PowerPoint, you will have to go pro, okay? But um, at least you're able to present from here, okay? You, be able to present, uh, can put it here in slideshow and it's able to present from here, okay. 
So you can do all your editing of the presentation and everything, adding the relevant thing. And if you, if you don't have the opportunity yet to go uh, premium with the tool. Yes, it saves your work automatically. Push. Um, everything that you saved is here and you can always go back to, 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 to access your previous slides. Yes, so that is Dectopass. Go to the next. Then we have this, uh, I love PDF, which um, a tool that helps to convert uh, documents into different formats. Many times you have this document and you want to, let's say, convert your PDF into a PowerPoint presentation. So this tool does it uh, seamlessly well. You can come here, select the PDF file. Tap on this. And then you tell it to convert it into PowerPoint. So when it's done, then you download your PowerPoint presentation. And that PDF will have turned into that PowerPoint format. Okay, I know our time is fast spent, but we are coming to the end. Then we also have chat, chat PDF. Uh, chat PDF, you're able to upload any PDF document. Let me share it in the chat. And it's able to extract for you information from that PDF. In case the document is so long, uh, it's able to pick out those important elements which you ask it actually to prompt it and then uh, it will be able to give you that information. So if you have a PDF with so many pages, uh, you can use this to extract information. Okay, for example, this was on artificial intelligence. So ask it uh, importances of artificial intelligence. So it will pick up from the text that is within the document and it will be able to give it to you in summary in case you're not able to go through it, okay? So you can also um, use that, try it at your own time. Then uh, we have this tool that is able to convert your article into a PDF. Uh, sometimes when you're applying for these different uh, awards, they, they want you to submit a link to your article and also in addition, submit that article in what? In PDF form. Uh, so uh, this tool uh, is able to convert your article link into a PDF. So all you need to do is uh, have your link, I paste it in that space, I'll get a link here. Then you click here to convert that. Article into PDF. What's wrong? Let me reload this. Okay. Then you download the converted file. And it will transform this uh, whole web article into a PDF. 
Okay, as we end, yes, someone asked about this. Okay, someone is asking, just a minute. Yes, if you want to transcribe uh, audio into text, uh, this tool is called Podcastle, and you're able to upload an audio, which will turn it, uh, transcribe it into text. So let me share the link. There, so you have to click here to get started. Continue with Google. So then here is select personal use. Put your name. Mission of content. Then here you can click here to skip for now. So it has these different functionalities, revoicing, recording, editing, but for now we want to transcribe. Then we click to continue. Then here you upload your audio that you want to transcribe. Click here. Okay, and then we have our, our transcribed text here on the right. Yes, and then you can export it either as a document or as a PDF, uh, which you can make even further refine and even edit better. Yes, Gloria, the, the, the recording shall be shared. It's actually streaming live on YouTube. You can go to the Ultimate Media Consult YouTube channel. Right, the recording shall be shared and even an email shall be shared as well. Okay. Yes, we already looked at this um, and how to use Microsoft Word to capture your voice and turn it into text. Yes, uh, any other questions? Are there any questions? Come to the end of the session. I'm sorry I shot over time by sorry. six minutes. Sorry, it can be the tool that creates um, a ping. The tool that creates what? The one that you talked after uh, you talked after chat PDF. After, after chat PDF, uh, the one that converts from a link to to a PDF. Just Hello, um, Elizabeth, I didn't get that. Well, you want me to go through the one that converts from a link to a PDF? Eh? Yes, it's, uh, it's here. Do you want me to redo the process or share the, the link in the group? Take of the others, I don't want to delete. I can't. Um, I'm requesting you put your question in the chat. Your network is not so good, so you're buffering, and I can't hear you well. Uh, Christopher, you're asking what is the what is the tool that makes a video you played at the start? I think you're asking about. Uh, 
Studio. It's called a DID Studio. Oh, yes, Elizabeth, I've shared the, the, the link. It's above there. I hope you've seen it. Yes. Um, any other questions? Okay. Oh, yes. Um, Thank you. What tool can you use to analyze, for example, what, what tool or what can you use to analyze um, words into codes, categories, and themes? What tool can you use to analyze posts in two categories? I don't get that clearly. Yes, what can you use to analyze um, the words in two codes, categories, and themes? Hmm. Interesting, I don't think I get, um, the tool, uh, what, what you can use to turn your words, let's say, into a quote. Eh? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I think a chat, chat GPT maybe can help with that uh, because the question is not so clear to me. Unless someone has understood it well, would like to answer. What I can say is that um, there are times, for example, you've conducted research and you want to understand quickly pick out the patterns of words in this uh, maybe um, video or audio recording so you want mm. to get what are the codes what are the similar patterns what are the themes that are coming out of this text uh, i'm not so certain on a tool that can do that as for now but i can do research upon it and i can be able to to answer your question. I think you've taken my number, right? That you ask, I can do research on it and I can come up with a tool that can be able to help with that. But as for now, off head, I don't have any. Okay, any other question? Right. So hey, you, you talked of the tool you for your that creates uh, presentation. Which tool is that I try to ask you? Uh, the tool that creates presentations is called Dectopass. Let me share uh, Dectopass. Let me get the link for you. Yeah. Let me get it here. Yeah, the link to that is in the chat, the one that makes presentations. I hope you've seen it. Okay, if there are no other questions or submissions. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome, Charlotte. Thank you for your active participation and engagement today. Let's continue practicing with these tools. God bless you all. Okay. Yes, so if um, we have come to the end, thank you so much for your engagement and actively participating. If you need any further help uh, or detail with any of these tools or even your organization, feel free to contact me or, and uh, we'll be able to, to guide you on how best you can maximize these tools for, their, for this uh, activity. 
Thank you. I would like now to hand over back to Patricia.